Chapter 4, Section 3, The First Amendment, Speech. First Amendment jurisprudence on speech follows a pattern similar to court decisions regarding other rights. A slow expansion of individual protections, followed by even more robust protections in the early to mid-20th century. Foundational cases include the Espionage Act cases from the First World War, notably Shank v. United States, 1919. In those cases, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. articulated the clear and present danger test, which focused not on the content of the speech, but on whether the speech presented an immediate danger to legitimate government or societal interests, regardless of the speaker's intent. As with the Sherbert test, the court balanced the social good against individual freedom. The Supreme Court then expanded protections for speech, taking into account the speaker's intent and the likelihood of the speech to create a criminal or negative outcome. The landmark case, Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District, 1969, dealt with symbolic speech by students who were protesting U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War by wearing black armbands. Tinker held that the students' rights under the First Amendment outweighed the desire of school authorities to avoid controversy, as the armbands in question did not materially and substantially interfere with the requirements of appropriate discipline in the operation of the school. The protections in Tinker are not absolute. Speech that is merely obscene is not protected, nor is speech that the court thinks is overly disruptive, as opposed to the silent protest of the Tinker plaintiffs. As with religious freedom, questions of protected speech are subject to balancing tests that weigh the needs of the government against the rights of individuals. This can lead to different results at different times, as external circumstances change. For instance, in wartime, speech restrictions have been heightened. Courts have justified these restrictions as necessary for the war effort. In times of peace as well, courts have considered the needs of society when deciding whether to constrain the rights of the individual.